Today, we're gonna test this super high gravity ale yeast and see if it can truly go up to 25%. Let's get started. So this yeast right here is the WLP099. This is a yeast that totes, according to its spec sheet, that can go, to, go up to 25%. It is an ale yeast, not a wine yeast, not a champagne yeast. So it's to be expected that most ale yeasts are lower, are only going to be able to reach a lower ABV. This can go up to 25%. Now, this is a little spoiler for you. This is the fourth time I've done this video. I have bought this yeast four times now, tested it four times, and I'm gonna walk you through every single one I've done. It's been about a year since I started the first version, so this is number four. Let's just get started. Again, 25%, all those things. Um, of course, this 25% is, is assuming that you've given it proper nutrition and doing all those things. So let's talk about each version. In version number one, video number one I did with this, I took and I basically threw a ton of honey at this honey and sugar, at this yeast. I threw, or I started the gravity of this one at 1.164. That four is kind of estimated, honestly. So um, anyways, that started at 1.164, and then it fermented out after roughly, I think it was like 30 something days, down to 1.040 and halted. So that chewed, in that iteration, it chewed through 124 points of gravity, which is a pretty high gravity to start with, and stopped. It, it landed at about a 16.28% brew. Definitely shy of 25%. I wasn't pleased with that. I kind of realized from that version that starting it with such a high gravity was not going to be the way to do it and then I needed to go through a step feeding portion or version. So step number two, version number two, I started the gravity at 1.0, sorry, 1.108, and it fermented out to uh, 1.000. I then added honey back to it. So I added about 24 points of gravity worth of honey. That fermented out to 1.000, and then it halted. So that one only burned through 132 points of gravity in total, which is about 17.32%. What I realized with that version is that it still didn't work. I thought step feeding would fix it. I did a podcast with Eric Fowler from White Labs and asked him, what the heck am I doing wrong? And he said this. And it's, it's yeah, so there I would have, I would never let it fully dry out before feeding more sugar. Okay. Um, once the sugar is depleted, the yeast thinks it's done. Mm. So reactivating, it's going to be very difficult. I see. So coming off of version two, hearing him say, yeah, you don't want it to ever go completely dry as you're step feeding made me realize I got to do it again. So I started again, a third time version three, uh, the starting gravity was 1.090 using honey and, um, uh, and another juice base. Then, um, the it went down to 1.030 i i added more honey and got it up to 1.066 anyways this is the little graph you'll see of all of the breakdowns this one capped out at 144 points of gravity which is 18.9 percent still shy of 25 percent after version three after following what eric said i was like what the heck am i doing wrong and I finally realized, well, I'm not giving it proper nutrition throughout the whole process. I'd given it my kind of lazy man's way of putting all the nutrients in the beginning, but I didn't step feed. I didn't follow a Tosna 2.0 or Tosna 3.0. So we did, I decided one more time, this is the last attempt. And that's what I see right here. Version four, Whew, here we are. I wanted to follow do pretty much exactly what I did with the version three, but give it the Tosna uh, 2.0 schedule. So meaning that you start with, oh, I'll put it this way, Tosna, the Tosna nutrient schedule, nutrient protocol, tells you how much nutrient you need for the gravity to go through, and then you add it over time. So this said, based off of my starting gravity of 1.070, 
that I needed to start with 1.3 grams of nutrient and split it into four parts. So I added essentially 0.3 grams each day. What I did with this one, started the gravity 1.070. Every single day I added Tazna, I added, uh, I went through the Tazna protocol. So I started off by adding Fermade K until you get to about 9%. At 9%, the yeast, they don't really metabolize the dimonium phosphate in Fermade K as well. So what ended up happening is I switched over to the, the more natural, I'll say, or organic version, Fermade O. So I put Fermade O in once I hit 9%. Followed the Tazna protocol all the way through this process. Literally fed the yeast while I also step fed them, which was a huge pain. I'll show you all of the gravity readings right here. Original gravity, 1.070. It jumped down, got down to 1.022. I added more honey, of course, still step feeding with nutrients. Anyways, this whole process, all the way up until day 30, and it capped out. We're currently at day 45, and it's still the same percent. It's still the same um, gravity. So this thing has stopped again. We've chewed through 152 points of gravity, leading us to 19.95% ABV brew. This video is taking forever. Has this process been pretty fun? Yes, but it's also been a huge pain. This yeast, I have not been able to get it to 25%. It totes they can go to 25%, but I haven't been able to get it there. Now, I know some of you in the comments or some people are gonna say, well, you didn't also factor in that the honey displaces volume, which also affects what the real ABV is at the end. Of course, if you water something down, you're going to uh, bring the total ABV down. I honestly, I've, I don't know the full science behind adding honey to this. This version right here, it started with three and a half pounds, no, I'm sorry, three pounds of honey to start. By the time we had added all of our honey to step feed to get to 152 points of gravity, we had added four and a quarter pounds more honey. So this right here has seven pounds of honey in it. Seven pounds, and seven and a quarter pounds. Anyways, that's a lot of honey to get to 20%. Uh, I followed the, the right nutrient schedule. I can't do it. I cannot get this yeast to go to 25%, and I will not be doing a version five. So sorry, this thing for me, White Labs, I cannot get to 25%. I would love for someone to reach out and tell me what the heck I'm doing wrong, because I'm very interested. Have I heard of yeast that can get to 25%? Yeah, in fact, some like uh, regular wine yeast actively push past their normal ABV cap. I've heard of people getting the Lauvin EC1118 up to 19, 20%, and it totes that it can only go up to 18%. So with this being an ale yeast, it is impressive that it got to 20%, but saying the 25% high ABV uh, capability, I, I don't believe it actually can. I'm gonna do a quick, if I can find the bottles, I'll do a quick tasting. All right, so I've got all four of the versions in front of me right now. This is the starting one. It had a kiwi and strawberry base. So I used that juice and then honey and everything. This was back in August of 2020. Almost, we're about 11 months old on that guy. This is apple juice and honey, the version two. Um, this one capped out at 16%. Didn't go too crazy, to be honest. Um, the next one is I can't remember what I used for this one. This is another super high gravity. Was this apple juice? I can't recall. And then of course, version four, which is right here. Let's go ahead and taste them. Version one, it's the oldest one. It's actually got a very nice, like caramely, pretty interesting taste to it. This one weirds me out because it's kiwi and strawberry juice, but it tastes like toffee, caramel, lots of honey character. I honestly think this one's pretty dang good. Um, I, and I I did a tasting of these, the last version three when I tried to finalize that video. So I remember this one. It's still very hot though. Version one hits me right in the face. Version two, apple juice and honey. This one has some pretty 
thick legs on it, meaning that the alcohol, you can see it like on the glass. It's very clear though. Ooh. That's tannic. Very, um, got some, uh, some acidity to it. Yeah, this one, not great. Ooh, these are, these are freaking high ABV. Holy crap. And the third one, version three, this one has a little bit more sweetness to it. Um, it, I gotta remember now. Oh yeah, version three, we ended at 1020. So we didn't, we still have some sweetness. Oh, the, that's okay, that makes sense. That's why. Final gravity for the first one was 1040, which is why it's sweet. One, uh, final gravity 1.000. Final gravity for this one is 1.020, so a little sweetness. It's really not bad. It's got a pretty nice full body and uh, very juicy, still honey forward. Not bad. And last one, but not least, this is uh, the current version. The fun fact about this one, I started with uh, clover honey, I believe, and then I added a pound of Tupelo honey, a pound of avocado honey, another pound of avocado blossom honey, and almost another pound, and ended with blueberry blossom honey. So this has four different kinds of honey in it, and it's the highest ABV, almost 20% and youngest. Whoa. Yeah, that's a lot, a lot of flavor. Oh, it's kind of got a um, whiskey, oaky side. That's still very hot. You get the heat from that one. That's like punching me in the face. Overall, all of these things were not pushed to 25%. That's the point of this video. The tasting side, it, it matters, but more importantly, I could not push this to 25%. I encourage you, if you'd like to go and purchase this yeast and do this test for yourself, this is the WLP099. This yeast, is very interesting and it did a good job. It just didn't reach the highest cap that I wanted it to or that it's toted to. If you do this test and if you make any mead, make sure you are giving it proper nutrition. I think the end of the line truth here is that proper nutrition did help this thing go further, ferment healthier and go through the correct um, process. Now, this one, I, I would say I, I started with Ferment K I then switched to Fermade O. You can use either. This has been a lot of fun, a very long process, but I, I will be putting, I think I have a couple more bottles of these three. I'll be bottling this one, putting a portion of it back so that I can do a taste test in the future. It's gonna need a lot of time being almost 20% ABV. I would love for you to leave a comment. What do you think? Um, did I somehow miss a step? I feel like four versions of this, I did not miss a step, but maybe I did, I don't know. Leave a comment, do all the things below, and I hope to see you in a future video. So with that, cheers.